Okay, so uh, in the last class, uh, we have discussed about the basic notion behind the biasing. And you know that biasing is needed uh, before you uh, make that particular circuit useful for amplification. The same concept is also applicable for uh, the BJT based circuit that you already seen in the last semester uh, in case of electronic circuits. Now, here also, as I mentioned last day, that uh, you have this MOS device, you have this particular MOS device, NMOS, uh, three terminals, gate, drain, and source. And in order to ensure that uh, this particular device is capable of uh, amplifying the small signal, uh, you need a bias voltage. In addition to the small signal voltage is V in, in addition to this particular voltage, you need to add some bias voltage. And last day I also mentioned what, sh what should be the, uh, the possible value for this, uh, this bias voltage V1. Right. We have used, uh, okay, the V1 could have been one threshold, V1 could have been two thresholds, could have been three thresholds. So as you increase the uh, value of this bias voltage, actually you are, uh, you are moving uh, towards this side of, of, of this particular graph. And uh, since uh, this is nothing but a parabola, after VTH, uh, this is nothing but the ID versus VGS graph. So when the device is uh, just on, when the value of the VGS is just greater than the threshold voltage, then the device is just on, and in that particular case, uh, the device becomes on in the saturation region, right? So the expression is something like that: half mu and C ox W over L VGS minus VTH whole square. It's nothing but a parabola. Now, if you take the slope of this graph, obviously here the slope is less, and if you move to this higher side, the slope is even more larger. And this slope is nothing but your uh, transconductance GN, and this transconductance will tell you how strong the device is, right? So for a given uh, VGS, for a given particular variation of this input signal, something like that. So this is the variation. Now if you, if you just uh, take this point, obviously uh, you have some, some amount of uh, ID variations. On the other hand, if you just shift this particular point from here to here, the corresponding ID variation will be smaller for a given uh, input variation. On the other hand, if you move this point towards this side, then obviously the corresponding ID variation will be larger for a given VGS variation or input variation. But remember, you cannot use very high value of VGS because there is a restriction. Because if you use very high value of VGS, then ultimately the device will enter into the triad region. So you have to operate within the saturation region, but you have to select a certain, certain value of GM for which uh, the corresponding ID variation is large uh, for a fixed VGS variation or input variation, right? So last day we have discussed elaborately how to select the corresponding threshold voltage, I mean corresponding bias voltage V1. Now here, uh, for example, suppose your bias voltage is V1. Uh, so when uh, your input signal is absent, I mean uh, the small signal is absent when V is not there, then uh, uh, the corresponding VGS value is nothing but V1, right? And obviously you require some uh, bias at the output side as well in, in the form of V2 because if this is not present, then obviously your uh, circuit will not work. Right, and practically what happens, we don't use two different sources, V1, V2 separately, rather we use one, uh, uh, say, bias uh, or one particular uh, supply line, VDD, and from this VDD, we take the corresponding connections. Okay, and uh, this RD is there, uh, so that uh, through this uh, RD, whenever some uh, current flows, some voltage will be developed, small signal voltage will be developed. So, as you know, uh, this is the expression for uh, your uh, drain current under DC condition, ID is equal to half mu and C ox W over L, VGS minus VT is whole square in saturation, and you have to maintain that the drain source voltage should be, uh, this drain source voltage should be uh, greater than the gate source minus the threshold voltage. That means the drain source should be higher than the overdrain voltage. So that in, over the entire region of operation, over the entire region of operation, your device is there in the saturation. And accordingly, you have to select the the drain source voltage, right? And uh, last we have uh, using a particular example, uh, we, we have shown how to select the value of this V2, this uh, the bias voltage at the output side, so that the device remains in the saturation uh, even when the your input attains a maximum or in, input attains a peak. So. Now, this is for the bias calculation that we had last day. Now, today what we are doing is that over and above this bias point, now we are adding some input signal. 
as you have done for your BJT amplifier also. Over and above this input signal, I mean over and above this V1, the DC voltage, you are adding some input signal in the form of V in. And the variation of V in is something like that. This is the variation. How about some scientific order variation I am considering? Some scientific order variation, something like that. Okay. Then what about the total instantaneous uh, voltage, total instantaneous uh, get to source voltage? It's nothing but the, the DC value DC1, V1 plus this V in. So because of this V1, you have certain ID. For this V1, you have certain ID and this ID can be obtained from this, uh, from this particular ID which is graph. Suppose you have selected V1 to be over here. This is your V1, this is the DC VGS value when the input is absent, the small signal is absent. This is the DC value, DC VGS, and if you just uh, project this on this particular graph, then this is your ID value, this ID1. So ID1 is the DC uh, drain current, and given by this particular formula, ID is equal to half mu and C of W over L, VGS minus VTH whole square. So here, ID1 is nothing but a half mu and C of W over L into V1 minus VTH whole square. If you just, just neglect this analog modulation, that should be your ID value, right, or ID1 here. And then over and above this uh, uh, this particular V1, now you are adding some small signal, something like that. Suppose my small signal is a sinusoidal signal. Okay. Now if the V1 value, uh, or rather the VGS value, increases over and above this V1, then what happens? You have now if you go into the device physics, you are providing more uh, gate voltage. Some source is grounded. You are providing more gate voltage. So what happens? You have more electron density for NMOS, more carrier concentration, so you have more current, right? So obviously when the V1 attend or rather VGS attends its peak over here, then this is the corresponding current value, suppose this is ID dashed, and when the uh, your total instantaneous voltage attends its minimum value over here, then this is the corresponding ID value, that is ID double dash. So this is the variation of this uh, ID. <coughs> Initially when the uh, only the DC signal is present, when only V1 is present, your ID value is ID1, that is the DC ID, and when the input signal attains its peak, that means you are over here, positive peak over here, then the corresponding uh, drain current is going by ID dashed, and when the input attains its negative peak, then the corresponding uh, drain current is ID double dashed. So from ID1, is, or rather ID1 is the, the DC value of the drain current, and ID dash is the peak value of the drain current, and ID double dash is the minimum value of the drain current. So that is the variation, ID dash to ID double dash. That is the variation. And if I assume that this variation is small, I mean for the VGS, for this input signal, if this variation is small, then I can assume that over this range from here to here, I can assume that, okay, that particular slope is almost constant. Although it's a parabola, you know that this parabola so slope is not constant. At every point, the slope is different, right? But if I assume that okay, that, that variation is small enough, this variation with respect to this V1, if this uh, input variation Vn is small enough, then over this region, I can consider this slope is almost this constant. And what is that slope? So that slope is given by a del ID upon del VGS calculated at ID1, uh, calculated at V1, and that is given by mu and C of W model into VGS minus VTH. That is the uh, transconductance. So transconductance, you may argue that okay, over here the transconductance is different, over here the transconductance is different. That's true. But if I assume that uh, that variation is not that much, so the once again I have to invoke the small signal concept, right? So this variation is not that much. It's not like that. The variation is small, so that over this region, uh, I may assume that uh, this particular uh, this particular slope is almost the constant, and given by a mu and C of W over L into VGS minus VT. So you know the other form of this uh, GM, right? What are the other forms? <coughs> Another form was square root of twice ID mu and C of W over L. So suppose uh, if you know that this is ID1, so the corresponding GM is square root of twice ID1 mu and C of W over L. The other value is twice ID upon uh, VGS minus VT. So depending upon the available uh, values, whether you know the drain current or whether you know the overdrive voltage or whether you know the W by L ratio. So depending upon that, you can actually calculate the GM value or the transconductance value, okay? And this variation, so this variation, so once again, if this is a straight line, I may assume if, if this is, uh, the, the slope is constant, then I may assume that the corresponding variation over here from ID dash to ID double dash, this variation is also sinusoidal, 
right? And these hydration is nothing but your small i. Small i, the small signal current. Okay? And I'm allowing this small signal current to flow through some RT so that some small signal voltage will be developed. That is the notion of amplification. So, uh, because of this, uh, so, so total instantaneous value, small VGS is given by V1, that is the DC value, plus the small signal value, that is V in. And because of this, because of this excitation, the corresponding currents are, I mean, I, I capital D, I capital D is your total instantaneous drain current. This is nothing but the DC drain current ID plus the small signal current. So, here ID is nothing but your ID1. Okay. So, now if I just want to find out what is this small i uh, capital D. So, this small i capital D is half mu and C of W or L. This VGS, small v capital G, that means total instantaneous voltage. It's a DC voltage plus the small signal components. Small VGS minus Vth whole square. Now, what is that? So, this part is constant, half mu and C of W over L. I can also call it K, some constant. So, what is this small VGS? So, small VGS having two, small v capital GS, it is having two components. One is uh, uh, V1 and second one is, uh, rather, uh, uh, one is V1 and second one is V in, right? So, V1 plus V in minus Vth. This entire thing, V1 plus V in minus Vth. So, V1 minus Vth plus V in whole square. And then, uh, I should take the, the DC part outside. So, half mu and C of W over L, V1 minus Vth whole square into 1 plus V in minus, V in by V1 minus Vth whole square. Now, can you identify this point, this, this, this entire thing? Half mu and C of W over L, V1 minus Vth whole square. What is that? That is the DC current, DC, DC uh, drain current, that is ID1. So, I can uh, equate this one to be small i d, small i capital D, that is the total instantaneous current, is, is i, capital I capital D, that means in, in your case, this is i d1, into 1 plus v in upon v1 minus vth whole square. So, ultimately, this is the expression for a small i capital D. So, if we just further observe this one, then we have uh, i d into 1 plus v in by v1 minus vth whole square and this entire thing now if i assume that this this thing this one is small with respect to one that means with respect to the overdrive voltage v1 minus vth is overdrive voltage now with respect to this overdrive voltage if the input variation is small right then what i can do 1 plus x whole square so this is in the form 1 plus x whole square that can be approximated to be 1 plus 2x. So, I am just neglecting this x squared term because that value is very, very less than 1. So, then uh, what I get and if, if that, that condition is satisfied, then I say that the input signal is small enough. So, I can call it like small signal. That means with respect to my uh, overdrive voltage, if the input variation is small, with respect to that, it's much, much less than this, then uh, it is nothing but a small signal. Okay. So, uh, what I get a small i capital D uh, is equal to capital I capital D into 1 plus 2x, 2 into V in upon V1 minus Vth and then ultimately this part, id plus this entire thing, 2 id into V in upon V1 minus Vth. Okay? Now, can you identify this term, this entire thing, 2 id by V1 minus Vth? Yeah. That is GM. So, that's why we have so many expressions for GM. One expression was well known uh, mu and C of W over LVGS minus VTS. That is a well known expression. Then sometimes you require that expression twice ID upon VGS minus VTS. So that is the expression twice ID upon uh, V1 minus VTS. Remember, this VGS is nothing but uh, your DC VGS, DC gets source voltage. That is V1 in our case. So uh, I can always equate this to be, say, small ID, small I capital D as capital I capital D plus small i small d. So, total instantaneous current is the DC current, DC drain current plus the small signal current. So, this is my DC drain current capital I capital D given by half mu and C of W over L V1 minus Vth whole square plus we have the small i d. So, small i d is given by this one. So, this small i d is having, it's, it's nothing but a product of two different things. One is this one that you already know, this is GM calculated at V1 minus Vth and the second one is your V in. So, now you understand that because of the application of V in, now if your device is strong enough, if your device is strong enough, because ultimately I have to pass this, uh, this small ID through our register and then accordingly uh, some drop will be there and we will measure the corresponding output voltage across this register. So, for a given input signal, for a given V in, I have to select that particular GM value which will give me a higher uh, ID, right? So, accordingly, I have to select. So, 
So eventually, uh, that is your circuit. Uh, what we have considered that is a circuit uh, simplistic model consisting of one NMOS, the DC uh, bias, small signal uh, applicable over there, some resistor RD, and some bias voltage at the transfer side. So now you have observed that my ID small i uh, capital D, the small i capital D can be divided into two components. One is capital I capital D plus small i small d. That means your uh, total instantaneous current is nothing but the summation of the DC drain current and the small signal current. Okay. So, if, if this is my compound circuit, compound amplifier circuit, so once again I can break this circuit into two different regions of operation, or rather two different modes. One is the, uh, the DC mode, whenever only the DC signal is applicable, and second one is a small signal concept, right? right. So, what should be my, uh, uh, what should be the approach? How to convert the compound circuit into the only uh, your uh, DC mode? How can I do that? So whenever you find some small signal component present, you have to make it inactive. So here you find, okay, here you find that in this entire circuit, you have, uh, this is the only small signal component present, the small signal voltage source. So I have to make it inactive. So how to make a small signal voltage source inactive? You have to make it short. Shorted, right? So uh, in the uh, DC analysis, in the bias analysis, what you have, you have this NMOS device, you have this D1, you have this register RT, and you have this D2. And accordingly, now you can calculate the, all this, cal I mean, all these values, what should be my ID value. You can now calculate. Given this is my V1, so this is DGS uh, under DC case, and you know the threshold voltage, uh, you just calculate. If the V1 CX is given to you, WL is given to you, you can simply calculate ID value. And then if you know ID, you, you know the V2 value. Then you can calculate what is my RD value, uh, rather what is my ID value. I, ID I already calculated from, from this expression and you know the V2. So V2 minus this ID at the drop will give you the corresponding VDS, the drain source voltage. And you have to check whether this drain source voltage for a given V2, whether this drain source voltage is uh, capable to uh, keep your circuit in the uh, saturation region. Because already you know what is my threshold voltage, what is my uh, gate source voltage. So you know the, what is my overdrive voltage. Right? You have to check that for a given V2, for a given RD, you have to ensure that my drain source voltage, which is, which is nothing but V2 minus ID times RD, that value should be greater than the overdrive voltage. So the device remains in saturation in the uh, under DC operation. Okay? And then what happens in the, uh, in the small signal operations? In the small signal operation, what we have is, once again for the small signal operation, you have to make all the DC signal all the DC signal you have to make inactive, right? So in this circuit, you have two DC part. One is this V1, second one is this V2. You have to make it inactive. So how to make them inactive? Simple, since if they are the voltage sources, if they, if they are current sources, you have to make it open circuit. Since they are voltage sources, you have to make it short circuit, right? So here you have this NMOS. Now this VN will be there because you are considering the small signal analysis, this VN should be there. And suppose this is a variation of the MPM, something like uh, a sinusoidal signal. You have RD, register will be there, both in the DC analysis as well as for the small signal analysis. And then this part, I mean, this node should be connected to ground. You understand why? Just invoke the same concept that you have learned in electronic circuits. Right? So this is my small signal model. So given this particular small signal circuit, now, as I already told you that in any particular complicated circuit, you might be having so many MOS devices. So it's not possible for you to uh, consider this MOS as a three-terminal Rather, try to break this uh, or try to analyze this MOS from its uh, model, small signal model. Right, because in a particular circuit, you can have so many MOS devices. So it's better to deal with the model of the MOS. So as we have already discussed in the last class also, so now we have two different models. One model corresponding to uh, one model corresponding to the to the DC operation. The other model corresponding to the small signal operation. So in the DC operation, what we have, we have basically three terminals, as you know. That is true for the DC as well as for the small signal analysis. So we have three terminals for the MOS. One is the gate terminal. Second one is the source terminal. Third one is the drain terminal. Right. And as of now, we have not considered any the channel length modulation. Okay. So between gate to source, I'm applying some VGS, 
that is inside the moss, uh, which has been drawn with this purple or uh, pink color. Source is there, and between drain and source, you have this current half mu and C ox W or L, VGS minus VT is also. That is the model of the MOS itself drawn with this pink. Get source, drain, and this half mu and C ox W or L, VGS minus VT is also. If this voltage is VGS and this voltage is a constant voltage, we call it a DC analysis. This is not varying, remember. This is a constant voltage. This voltage is constant and this current is also constant. What is that current? The current value half mu and C of W over L, which is minus VTH whole square, because I am assuming that my device is operating in the saturation region. Because as I have already mentioned that if, you're, uh, if you would like to uh, generate or produce one amplifier using MOS, then obviously you have to operate the device in the saturation region. So that's why uh, explicitly I have used this particular expression, half mu and C of W over L into VGS minus VTH whole square. So, this MOS over here, this MOS over here, this entire thing, now this can be represented by, by this particular model. Okay? What else? Now you have to connect this MOS in the, or now we have to place this model into the circuit itself. Now in the circuit you find there is one V1 between the gate and the ground. Between the gate and the ground you have this V1. Right? So this is your gate terminal, this is your ground terminal. So, you connect this V1. Clear? Then, uh, between uh, uh, drain and uh, ground, you have two components. One is RD and the other one is V2. So, RD and V2. Okay? And then, now, now you, you can apply KCL and KPL. V1 is equal to VGS because source is also grounded. Source is grounded here. Might not be the case always, but here for the simplicity, I have assumed that the source is also grounded. So source is also grounded. So V1 and VGS they are same. You calculate uh, what should be my uh, if mu and C ox W Y L all these parameters are given to you. You just calculate what should be my current value for a given VGS and given uh, threshold voltage. So VGS is nothing but V1, and uh, accordingly uh, you just calculate what should be my uh, drain source uh, voltage. Because V2 is given, you, you, you know the ID, V2 minus ID RD is nothing but the potential over here at the drain terminal. Okay? Now come to the uh, small, signal, small signal model. In the small signal model, once again, uh, you have these three terminals. You have these three terminals for the small signal. Gate. Oh. Gate source and the drain. It should be uh, drawn with the blue anyway. So, what I find between gate and source, between gate and source, I am applying some small signal. So, that's why it is small VGS. Between gate and source, I am applying some small VGS. The variation is small enough with respect to the water rate voltage. This VGS should be less than, much much less than your V1 minus VTH, the gate source voltage minus threshold voltage under DC condition. So that is approximation of the That approximation of have meant. Now, what about the drain current? Is it a constant drain current? No. We have already said in the last slide that this small i small d is nothing but GM times the gate source voltage. Right. So this, this uh, current which is there between the drain and source, so this current can be represented as GM times VGS. So th that makes the difference between the small signal model with, with, the, with that uh, DC model. The DC model, the current source, it's a current source, but the current source is a constant current source. How many of double over that part? VGS minus VTH whole square, constant current source. But here, for the small signal model, it's not a constant current source because for the DC model, this, this voltage uh, applied between the gate and the source terminal, that's, that was the constant voltage, a fixed DC value. Right. But here it is not the case. Here the input signal varies. And therefore, this also varies. GMVGS, right? What else? So that makes the, uh, that makes my, so this, these three things, uh, rather this gate, source, drain, and uh, these two uh, parameters, VGS and GMVGS, will uh, just simply complete the construction of the model of the MOS. 
Right. What else? I have found that between gate to ground, this small signal V is connected. So that should be connected like this. Right? And between drain and ground, this should be grounded. This should be grounded because V2 is shorted. Small signal. So between drain and ground, you have this RB. Yeah. So now you just calculate what should be my drain source voltage. It's easy. Relatively easy. What is my drain source voltage? It's very easy. Only one uh, current source is, is flowing. I mean, only, only one current is flowing through this path. So this is zero. So what, what should be this potential? Just tell me. Minus what is this? Minus GM VGS into RT. This kind is flowing but in opposite direction. If the current flows in that direction, it should be positive with this ground. Since it is flowing in this direction, so this terminal is more negative as compared to this terminal. So this is so potential at this point is minus GM VGS into RT, right? And what is my VGS? So here since the source is grounded, thankfully, source might not be grounded. We'll see that later on. The source is not always grounded. And then we have the so many problems, so many complications. As long as or as, uh, as long as your source is grounded, you know for NMOS devices, the substrate time is always grounded. Body is always grounded. Now if source is grounded, there is no such second order effect. That's great. But every time you don't find the source is grounded. Now when the source is at some other potential, uh, instead of ground, ground potential, then you have to consider some second order effect. The body effect you have to consider. Thankfully here the source is grounded. So there is no effect of body, body effect. Okay, so since source is grounded and V is also applied between grain, uh, gate and the ground, so simply if you just simply apply give here, so VGS is equal to V, obviously, right? So now you can now you can calculate. So if this is your VDS and this is your V out basically, because here we are uh, considering the output terminal as your uh, the drain terminal. Drain terminal is acting as output terminal. So therefore, what should be my yes? So what should be my uh, output uh, voltage over there? This output voltage is given by minus GM VGS into RD. That means minus GM V into RD. So what about the gain? The gain expression is very simple. Gain expression is given by V out upon V or VDS upon uh, VGS. That is nothing but minus GM times RD. So now if you compare this expression with what you have already started in your BJT, a simple common emitter amplifier with uh, no bypass capacity, nothing else, some simple common emitter amplifier, then you have, uh, you can remember hopefully, the expression of the voltage gain was minus gm times rc. The very first expression that we have discussed, it was like minus gm times rc. Right, here also I am getting almost the same expression, kind of same expression, minus gm times rt. Okay? Now suppose, some modification uh, takes place. Now why it is needed, this modification? You may argue that why it is needed. Sir, I have a question. Hmm. You are studying the physical structure of the mass. You want to use a metal oxide capacitor. It's a capacitor between gate and the source. Hmm. Gate and the substrate. Yes, we should use the capacitor. Actually, in this particular unit, we are considering all those capacitors are not acting. Okay, capacitors are there. And we have to observe, so the impedance is not equal to infinite. Yes, there is some capacitor. And we have to understand the effect of this capacitor in the last unit, last module. Then whenever the capacitor is there, then what is the impact? Just remember what we have studied over there also. If you can remember uh, this, uh, your uh, frequency response of your uh, BJT amplifier, then initially, over, over a mid-range of the frequency, that time we can just neglect the effect of the capacitors. Right, so here also, okay, there are so many capacitors, not a, not a single capacitor. In fact, uh, for a particular mouse, you have the four capacitors. You have four capacitors. Between gate to source, you have one capacitor. Between gate to drain, you have another capacitor. Between source to body, you have another capacitor. Between drain to body, you have another capacitor. So you have so many capacitors. And you have to study the impact of those capacitors. But as of now, to make the calculation simple, to make you understand the concept, for the time being, we are just forgetting about the capacitor, the effect of the capacitors. But yes, the capacitor is there, and we have to study the effect of those capacitors later on. As I'm saying that, okay, the input, the input impedance is infinite. I mean, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, I'm saying that there is, I mean, nothing is present. 
from here to here, I'm saying oh, it's open circuit. But that's not the case. That can be treated as open circuit if the frequency operation is sufficiently large. Remember, there is a capacitor between the gate and the source. CGS, in the form of CGS. There is no register, but there is a capacitor. CGS is present between this terminal and this terminal, right? Now, if the capacitor is present, what should be my impedance? 1 by SCGS? Okay. Now, this 1 by SCGS, you can think, you can neglect. When can you neglect? When can you neglect this 1 by SCGS? When can you neglect 1 by SCGS is present? I mean, uh, this capacitor is present over there, from here to here. So, you can expect, okay, this, it, it will uh, pass some current. Right? But I am neglecting the effect of this capacitor for the time being. That means I am assuming okay, this is this is basically open circuit. But for some other frequency operations, you will see that the effect of the capacitor will be there. And accordingly, you have to find out the imp so I am saying that the impedance is equal to so input impedance is equal to how much? Infinite. But that is not exactly called infinite. There is some finite value of the impedance. Okay, at zero frequency you can call, call it infinite, but not some other frequency. So we'll study in detail the effect of those capacitors in the in the very last unit of this course. So as of now, we are just considering that okay, so there is no such capacitors present. Okay, now suppose uh, some modification takes place in the form of uh, so suppose here your uh, source uh, is uh, is not directly connected to ground, rather it is connected to ground through some uh, resistor RS. Now the question is that why should I do that? Because minus ZMRD have got some expression for the voltage gain minus ZMRD. So what's wrong with this um, this expression? ZMRD? What's wrong? Any idea? What's wrong with this minus ZMRD? We have seen now the gain the gain expression was minus ZMRD. So what's wrong? Is there any problem? So that we have to connect some because. Once you connect this source register, uh, rather RS between from this terminal to that terminal, from, from the source terminal to the ground terminal, remember, now you have to consider the other second order effect, like what you have to consider. But why should I do that at all? Is, is there is there no VGS is not equal to V, that's also true. But why should I do that? Because uh, it was uh, the cycle was simple, minus GMRD, the gain was fine. Any problem with the, with the previous circuit? Huh? Beautiful. Is there any problem with this with the gain expression minus Z or D? What do you feel? Okay, so the circuit looks beautiful, that is the answer. <laughs> the expression is minus Z or What, what's the problem with this minus ZMRT? What is the problem? Just tell me one, one such problem. Just tell me one such problem. And you can also refer to what you have already studied in, in case of your BAT uh, sample. There are so many problems. There are so many problems associated with this gain minus ZMRD. Okay, but it was tell me the one such. Only one. Remember here, you just invoke that concept that you have already studied in the, your BJT question. The same concept, it's a function of GM. Now we want higher gain. No, that we can neglect, we can assume that, okay, as I've already mentioned, nah, so that variation is more so that we can consider GM to be fixed. But the thing is that it's a function of GM. Now, if GM changes, GM might change because of various reasons. GM might change because of 3 amperes radiation. 
So the expression was, as you can know, the voltage gain, the expression for AV is minus Gm times Rt. That is the expression, right? <coughs> minus Gm Rt. And let me just uh, refer to one such expression for Gm. There are so many expressions. One expression of Gm was, in fact, three expressions were there. Square root of twice id mu n c ox w over l one such expression gm is equal to square root of twice id mu n c ox w over l that means it says that it's a function of can you just observe one such parameter which is a function of temperature here temperature so w by the law not c ox mu n Mu n. No, w n will not change. This will not change. So, temperature dependent. This one. Right. So what happens? Your gain is not a stable one. That is one problem. Right? The second problem is that suppose I would like to increase the gain to some extent. So, so okay, let me just uh, I take on only one problem, the gain is a function of temperature. So, once it is a function of Gm, so it's a function of the bias point, obviously, because uh, another expression for Gm was twice Id by overdrive voltage. It's a function of the bias point. So, if my bias point changes by some means, then obviously you may land up with some other gain. So, gain is not stable. Last day I was telling there are so many expressions for gain. Uh, there are so many. Uh, 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 attributes for an amplifier. One was uh, the gain, second one was your stability, third one was the uh, impedance and obviously the, the voltage swing. So there are so many so many uh, attributes corresponding to the uh, to any amplifier. Okay, so you have to address all of them or at least most of them. But with this simplistic model which consists of only one MOS and one register then this might not serve the purpose. Okay. Okay, so the thing is that because of which we have to connect one RS over there. Gradually you'll see that what is the impact of this RS. If you can remember the concept that you, that you studied in your uh, BJT course also, if you connect one register between the emitter to the ground terminal, then what is the impact? The impact was, I mean, what is the expression for the gain? That time the GM was not present. GM was not there. The BJT based amplifier, common emitter amplifier with the, uh, emit, with, with the emitter resistance is equal to RE. Suppose if it's not equal to, I mean, the emitter is not connected to ground. Hmm. That means it is almost equal to, it can be approximated to, so you have GM in the numerator, as well as you have gm in the denominator. So expression was like minus gmrc by 1 plus gmrc. It was something like that. Minus gmrc by 1 plus gmrc. So you have the expression for gm both in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So the effect of the gm can be minimized to some extent. Or if you assume that this gmr is much much greater than 1, then it is ultimately to minus of rc by r. So if it is minus rc by r, then ultimately it's a function, it's a ratio of two registers. And here, the situation is even more better for us because remember here we are not using some discrete registers in the form of RC or rather RAS or RD. Rather, we will make all those registers by means of the MOS devices. Can you get the point? The last time in, in our BJT course, the amplifier, uh, the, the expression for the, the gain was like minus RC by RD. So we are assuming that whenever the temperature changes, so it will affect both those two, both of these two registers, but this uh, the way it will be affected might be different, but since they are in the numerator as well as in the denominator, so the effect can be cancelled out to some extent. Might not be totally cancelled out, but it will be cancelled out to some extent. 
But here the situation is even more better for our for this case since uh, we have to design these RAs, RD, all these discrete registers also have shown over there by means of some discrete register. But remember, gradually we will uh, represent all those registers, these RAs and RD, all of them by means of some you know, MOS device. And then ultimately you will see that it's nothing but the ratio of this uh, WIN, and which is not a function of temperature. So the game will be much more stable. Okay, but that is not the point of discussion over here. Suppose this is my, uh, this is the, uh, suppose this is my uh, new circuit for which uh, the source is connected to ground by virtue of this RS source register. Remember there is, there is a MOS will be there, present over there, but for the timing, let's assume it's a register. Then uh, how can I draw the, so directly I can draw the small signal model. Forget about the, the DC model, I can directly draw the small signal model. Okay. How does it look like? You have three terminals, get, source, train, right? Between get to source, you have applied some VGS, small VGS. And between drain to source, you have some GM VGS. Remember, the voltage, uh, the, the current that is, that is uh, the current source uh, that is present between the drain and source, this current value is equal to GM times VGS. That means, the, so if the voltage dependence is VGS, so GM times that voltage dependence. It's not the voltage with respect to the ground. Voltage at this terminal with respect to ground. It's not like that. That might not be the case. As for example, here, this voltage with respect to ground and these two voltage, I mean, this voltage is not the same. Because this is not grounded. Source is not grounded. So remember, this voltage, the, the current source that you are getting over here, the expression for the uh, current source, I mean, uh, the value is given by GM times the voltage difference between gate and source. Okay, so it is GM VGS, this voltage is VGS, fine, and then source to ground you have RS, register, it should be there, in the small signal model, so source to ground you have RS, and between drain to ground you have RD, okay, and you have this V in present between gate and ground. So here V in and uh, rather uh, V in and VGS they are not the same. Right. You can calculate what should be my source potential. You can easily calculate GM VGS times R is. So that part, so I think this calculation is done afterwards. And this part I am not discussing one second because uh, hopefully you know this one. Uh, in a composite circuit, if you have a voltage source, I mean, uh, if you have a battery, constant battery voltage source, then it should be represented by short circuit in the small. This is well known thing. In the composite circuit, you have a voltage source, a battery, something like that. Then it should be represented by means of a small signal equivalent circuit, uh, by means of a short circuit between A to B, these two terminal. And on the other hand, if you have a current source, then it should be represented by open circuit. That you know very well. Okay. So, okay, the calculation is not done over there. So, let me do this calculation. So what is the source potential Vs? The source potential is given by Gm Vgs Rs. Okay? Then what about your Vgs? What is Vgs? Get potential is V in. Source potential is this much. So V in minus Vs, Gm, Vgs, Rs. Okay, and what is your output output potential? V of uh, Vd or V out because output is obtained from this terminal, drain terminal. So what is V out? V out is given by minus Gm. VGS RD. Okay. So from this expression, you know, VGS. So from here, what I can write? Uh, VGS into 1 plus GMRS is equal to your V in. So 1 plus GMRS 
into VGS that is equal to V in. So, V out you can simply write as minus GM RD times VGS. What is this VGS? V in upon 1 plus GM RS. So, now if you So, now if you just uh, find out the expression for the gain A V which is nothing but V out upon V in that is given by minus G M R T divided by 1 plus G M R S. Almost the same expression that you have already encountered in your BJT course minus G M R C by 1 plus G M R T. Right, so here also minus GMRT by 1 plus GMRS. And this type of circuit is known as, although uh, technically I have not discussed, uh, this is basically a common source kind of thing, common source of amplifier, common source uh, MOS amplifier. I have not used uh, that term technically yet. And uh, okay, uh, hopefully I will discuss this later on. And whenever uh, the source is not grounded, source is connected to ground through some register RS through some other register, source register, then this is known as a source regeneration. Source regeneration. We will discuss this, this thing in detail later on. Okay. So, obviously you understand that uh, with respect to the previous case, since it is minus GMRT by 1 plus GMRS, the good thing is that the gain is less sensitive to GM. The gain is less sensitive to GM. That's a good thing. That means, it is much more stable gain. The gain is much more stable. It's not a function of GM. It's not a function of temperature. It's not a function of bias points. But what is the what is the limitation? What what is the uh, negative point out of this? Now the gain is reduced. So you understand the same trade-off that we already studied. The gain stability. If you have high stability, if you want to achieve high stability. Then the gain is reduced, and if you would like to have high gain, higher gain, then the stability is compromised. So, gain and stability cannot achieve both of them simultaneously. In the first case, the gain was large minus GMRT, but the stability was not present because the since the gain was a gain is a function of GM, so it's a function of temperature, it's a function of the bias point. And here the gain is to some extent less dependent on GM because you have GM both in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So therefore, the gain is more stable, but the value of the gain is small. So you have to uh, find out the solution. So neither of these two circuits, the first one and this one, neither of these two circuits will serve our purpose. Okay. <coughs> we have to think some other circuit. So, neither of these two circuits, whether this circuit or whether this circuit, this circuit or this circuit, none of these two circuits are completely perfect. Okay, so we have to search for some other alternatives, which can give you higher gain as well as a stable one. So, before we proceed to those circuits, let me just take uh, into account one of such second order effect. And you know this second order effect very well, that whenever, uh, as of now we have assumed that uh, the drain current in saturation region is constant, given by half mu C of W over L into Vgs minus Vth whole square. But remember, whenever the channel is pinched off, well before the drain end, then it is no longer valid. We have already seen because the integration as we have from this integration is not from 0 to L, rather it is from 0 to L dash. And we know that that difference is delta L between L and L dash is delta L is a function of VDS. For the timing, we have assumed that that's a, that's a linear function of VDS. So as VDS increases, this delta L also increases. That means the effective length of the channel reduces. And accordingly, we have already seen 
that expression for the drain current that is half mu n c ox we have already observed this expression no half mu n c ox w over l vgs minus vth whole square into 1 plus lambda vgs now that is for the dc operation now let us let us now try to observe what is its implication in the small signal as well so in the small signal case what we have in the small signal case we have the total current total instantaneous current this small i capital d right this is half mu n c ox w over l vgs minus vth whole square multiplied with 1 plus lambda small v capital d s right 1 plus small v uh, 1 plus lambda into small v capital d s this uh, small v capital d s is nothing but the capital v capital d s small v small d s right so what i can do i can divide this expression this small i capital d as this one one uh, half mu n c ox w over l vgs minus vth whole square one plus lambda vds up to this term plus you have the second term half mu n c ox w over l vgs minus vth whole square into the next part lambda small vds so this i d small i capital d one second is having two different components one is this capital a capital d and the second component is given by capital a capital d multiplied with lambda vds and because of the change in vds so here we are observing only the effect of only the change of vds not the change of vgs in the last case while calculating as uh, while calculating id or while observing id as a small i capital d as capital i capital d plus gm times vgs that time we have observed the effect of vgs only okay now here we are observing the effect of vds only what is the effect of vds on id not VGS. So that's why we have kept VGS constant. So that is that VGS is the DC VGS. But we are interested in observing the effect of this VDS on I. Okay. And what I find that because of the change in VDS value, the current also changes. So you have this small i capital D is having two components. One is this capital I capital D plus small i small d. Okay, so because of the change in VDS, you have the corresponding change in ID. So VDS is measured between drain and source terminal, and ID is also measured between drain and source terminal. So how can I model this variation? How can I model this uh, change? Can you get the point? Last time what I observed, whenever some change in VDS takes place, that is reflected as change in ID. So VGS was measured between gate and source terminal. ID was measured between drain and source terminal. So that, that so that change was reflected as a voltage dependent current source. So you have a voltage dependent current source present between the drain and source, whose current value is a function of the gate source voltage change. Right. Now this time what we have, this time the change in ID that means if I consider the small id, the small id is nothing but capital id multiplied with lambda vds. So because of change in vds, you have the corresponding change in id. Okay. So how can I model this? So basically if I observe that, okay, we have two points, suppose a and b. Now, what I find, if I change the potential between these two points, v a b, the corresponding current between these two points also changes. So how can I model this? By means of register. Because the current variation and voltage variation, both of them are observed across the same terminals. But last time it was not the case. Last time the current variation was measured between drain and source and the voltage variation was measured between gate and source. So that's why the current variation was represented by means of voltage dependent current source. But this time since the voltage and current both of them are measured with respect to the same two points, both with respect to drain and source, so I can always uh, represent that variation by means of a simple register. Now what is that resistance value? Uh, I d is equal to uh, capital to lambda times V d s. So this variation del I d by del V d s or I d by V d s is nothing but lambda I d. So what I can write, this V d s by I d is equal to 1 upon lambda I d. Okay. 
one upon lambda in so now with this introduction or with this modification uh, so the small signal model of the mos will be affected to some extent so so far what we have seen so far we have seen that uh, we have this terminal gate we have source we have drain and we have the vgs present between gate and source and a voltage dependent current source gm vgs present between drain and source now because of the implication of this uh, channel and modulation we have another component present between drain and source this manifestation is done by virtue of this resistance r r not whose value is given by 1 upon lambda e so henceforth in our calculation we will use this as my composite small signal model for mos now as of now we have so far we have just neglected this r not we have just neglected the channel modulation that means what we have met lambda is equal to 0 now if lambda is equal to 0 that resistance becomes infinite so some resistance connected in parallel so if it is infinite so i can just get rid of this resistance but now if lambda is non zero suppose some value 0 0.1 0 0.2 volt in or something like that then obviously uh, we have to incorporate the channel modulation so lambda zero means r not infinite there is no channel modulation more simplistic approach and lambda non zero means 0 0.1 0 0.2 volt in or something like that uh, then r not is finite and a channel modulation is incorporated Yeah. Okay. So now, with this, let us uh, once again observe what happens. Now, uh, if this is my case, then uh, once again uh, let, let me refer to uh, that particular uh, well-known uh, common source kind of amplifier because uh, I was uh, previously uh, I did not mention. Uh, the name of this particular amplifier because uh, the today's class is the is the beginning of of the amplification uh, and in the next class hopefully i will uh, technically mention why it is called common source or why it is common source or common drain or common gate or what are the implications of different types of modes or different types of configurations but still uh, hopefully you know this uh, concept very well that you have this particular mos device uh, source is grounded uh, you know, this v1 as a dc uh, bias signal and it, this uh, small signal vn is present and you have some resistance connected between drain and v2 is the corresponding drive in the output loop already you have seen this one this this entire circuit so uh, i am not going to the details of this one uh, if v1 is equal v1 is greater than the threshold voltage you understand that this entire circuit will operate if and only if the v1 value is greater than the threshold voltage v1 is higher than the threshold voltage then only you can understand okay the circuit becomes on or the mos becomes on and when v is not present what is your uh, id value this id value is given by half mu and c of w over l v1 minus vth whole square and accordingly uh, you can calculate what is my vr and <coughs> the drop across this resistance this drop across the resistance is given by id times rd all dc no small signal all dc and what about my vts the drain source voltage dc drain source voltage is v2 minus this drop so from here to here what is the voltage this voltage minus this voltage v2 minus this vr minus plus plus minus v2 minus vr v2 minus idrd now what happens here that is the case under dc signal you have applied some v1 this v1 is greater than vth you can select to be say 2 vth 3 vth depending upon the requirement as you go towards the higher uh, v1 value obviously you are moving towards the uh, upper point in the, in the slope and accordingly the corresponding gm value will be larger you select some value of v1 which makes the which makes the device on right and you calculate what is my uh, drain current if you know v1 you know the overdrive voltage v1 minus vth once you know this v1 minus vth you can calculate the corresponding uh, current id half mu and c of w over l overdrive voltage whole square right and then if you know this current id then this current is uh, allowed to flow through some resistor rt and this voltage v2 minus this uh, vr will give you the drain source voltage you have to make sure that this drain source voltage should be greater than the overdrive voltage so that the circuit is in the saturation region mos is in the saturation region right now suppose over and above this v1 i am allowing some v in to act something like that and I am calling this as delta V. 
Now, when this V in increases over and above this, so this rotted line is your DC line, that means your V1, and over and above this V1, I am having some V in variation, something like that. Now, when V in increases, that means what? Your total instantaneous gate source voltage will increase, VGS will increase, and ultimately this leads to higher ID. More gate drive means what? More carrier concentration. So, for a given VDS or for a given V2, what do you have? For a given V2, you have higher ID. Now, if ID is more, then you understand that over here, this what is my drain source voltage? This drain source voltage is given by V2 minus the voltage uh, drop across the resistance. Clear? So, if you have higher ID because of higher VA, then the VDS will drop. So, whenever you have the V in, when V in achieves its peak over there, then VDS will achieve its minimum over there. So, this gives rise to the corresponding phase shift, as we have already studied in case of your VJT based amplifier. So, the notion, notionally, both of them are same. So, if you understand, so that's why I have told you, that if you understand the concept of VJT based amplifier, you can al already incorporate, invoke that concept into your MOS based amplifier. So, the notional application being the same. Right. So, whenever your V in achieves its peak, positive peak, then the VDS achieves its negative peak, something like that. But the variation, this variation depends upon the corresponding uh, GM. So, in this particular case, it will depend upon the RD value as well as on GM value, GMRT. Okay. And that is the expression. I am not going to the details of that. Yeah, so now I am uh, formally I would like to mention uh, as I have already told you informally that it is a common source topology. Why common source? Because uh, the input is applied between gate and the source terminal and the output we are measuring with respect to the drain and the source terminal. It is not that source is grounded. Source might be at ground potential, might not be at ground potential because I have already shown you one such uh, diagram, one such circuit diagram for which the source is not at the ground potential. There is a resistance connected between the source and the ground. But that is also called a common source topology with source degeneration. Technically, the term was source degeneration. But here, what we find the input is applied between the gate and the source, and the output is measuring with we are measuring the output with respect to the drain and the source. Right. So that's why since the source is the common terminal, both to input as well as to output, so that's why it is known as the common source topology. Similarly, you can have the common gate topology common drain topology and obviously the cascade combinations as we have studied in case of VJT based amplifier. Okay, and we have already done this calculation. Uh, v out is given by minus GM V in times RT. So, voltage gain expression is given by GM times uh, minus GMRT or the mod wise it is GMRT. Okay, so how can you increase the voltage gain? How can you increase the voltage gain? One problem is there that the voltage gain is not stable, that is obviously one problem. But how can you increase the voltage? You have only two parameters, GM, forget about the minus G. You have only two parameters, GM and RT. So, how can you increase the voltage gain? So, first option is that you can increase the GM, either you increase the GM or you increase the RT. Right. So, take a look at the expression for GM. You have these three expressions for GM. Mvnc of W model VGS minus VTH, twice ID upon this and square root of twice ID into this. Now, last two expression says that, last two expression says that if you can increase ID, then GM can be improved or GM can be increased. Or what you can do, you can also increase the W by L ratio in order to increase the GM. Two options are there. Either you increase ID because typical in CX is a technology dependent parameter, you cannot change it. You can increase ID value or you can increase W by L. Now, what problem you can face if you increase if you increase RT or if you increase W by L? If you increase W by L, as you are mentioning previously, if you increase W by L, that means suppose you are making the device much more wider. For a given technology at L is fixed, suppose micron technology or say nanometer technology, suppose the, your, uh, the length of the channel is fixed, you cannot change the length, right? So, 
the different devices, different mouse devices, they are having different W's. And accordingly, you can play with the W by U. You cannot change the L. L is fixed. Suppose 10 micron, 5 micron. So all the devices are fabricated with 5 micron length. But the widths are different. So how to increase the W by L? You have to increase the width. Because L is fixed. Now, if you make the device much more wider, it gives rise to higher capacitance that you don't want. Capacitance is something that you don't want in our circuit because it is having some significant effect in the frequency response. But unintentionally, if you if you want to increase the width of the device so as to increase the GM value, unintentionally we have to invoke the effect of the capacitor. So you cannot increase this W for your requirement. That is one problem. Second problem is that you cannot also increase ID. Why not? You cannot increase ID so, so, so that you can increase GM. Or even if you increase ID, there is a maximum limit of GM which is given by uh, ID upon 1.5 times the thermal voltage. That is the maximum limit. But even if you cannot achieve that particular limit, you cannot go to the highest limit, highest possible limit uh, for this GM. What is the problem? If you increase ID, what's the problem you're facing? Yes. So whenever uh, you are using, okay, whenever you are increasing this ID value, remember, whenever you are increasing ID, so what is this voltage? This, uh, sorry. So whenever you are uh, increasing this ID, which is flowing through this RD, so what is your drain potential? Drain potential is VDD minus ID times RD. So if you have higher ID for a given RD, if you have higher ID, then what happens? The VDS drops and you have to make sure that VDS must not drop to that extent so that the device enters into the triode. The condition is that VDS should be greater than the overdrive. So you cannot have very high value of ID. If you have very high value of ID, then obviously the drop will increase, this IDRT drop will increase so that it will reduce the, the drain source voltage. That is the problem. And because of this reason, you can also you cannot also increase RT. The expression is what? GM RT. So you may always like to increase RT, keeping ID fixed. That is also not permissible. If you increase ID or if you increase RT, the ID RT drop will increase, which will reduce the drain source voltage. So remember, this drain source voltage cannot be very small. You have it, it has to be greater than your overdrive voltage. Otherwise, the device enters into the triode. So these are the limitations. Okay. Yes. So this circuit is not foolproof. And obviously, uh, the gain was minus GMRT, that's great. But now if you incorporate the channel and modulation, right, then uh, uh, apart from your RT, you have another uh, resistance present, R0. As of now, R0 was just infinite. Right, but now R0 is not infinite. If you incorporate the standard modulation, R0 is not infinite. You have some finite R0. Now, if you connect some register in parallel with R RD, the gain drops further. Effective resistance will, redu will be reduced. So now, what is your uh, what is your gain now? Now your gain will be minus GM times R0 parallel RD. So with channel and modulation, your gain is minus GM times R0 parallel RD. And without channel length modulation, your gain is minus GM times RD. So if you incorporate channel length modulation, the gain drops further. Okay. So what is the way out? What is the way out? How can you increase or uh, you, you cannot increase GM? There are certain limitations. You can increase RD to some extent. Up to how much? Okay, some limitation is there. You cannot increase RT to, to that extent so that the device enters in the trial. That is not possible. But the one option is that you have to increase RT. You have to increase RT. What you can think of? You can you can think that okay, RT can be called to infinite. That is the highest possible. I mean the the best possible value. Make RT infinite or you cannot achieve infinity, but you can just uh, approach towards infinity. That's the ideal, right? Now, had this been the case, 
Suppose you use some RD value which is very, very large, 100 some megaohm, something like that. Then what is the problem? Yes. Then the current, the DC current that we are expecting to be there under, under DC operation, the current which is flowing, flowing through, suppose this resistance is very, very large, then this current is very small. The current is very small. But you have to maintain some sufficient bias current. You have to maintain some sufficient bias current between the drain and the source. If you make RT very large, this is not possible. And at the same time, you have to get rid of this resistance. That means you have to find out or you have to come up with some solution that this RD that you have considered over there, this RT is equal to almost equal to infinity. Or at least not if it, if it is not infinity, at least very large. So two problems are there. One is that you have to ensure that the RD should be large enough. RD should be large enough in the small signal so that it can be approximate to be infinity. But during the DC operation, you have to provide or you have to establish some current between the VDD and this uh, drain terminal. That you cannot achieve by simple open circuit. So that is the problem you have to face. And you have to get rid of this problem and you have to come up with some solution. So the answer is that you have to reply. I'm just telling you the answer. Yes, the answer is that you have to get rid of this RD and you have to connect on current source over there. That will give you some constant current under DC operation. Right? How about the cascoding? You will just consider a, a, a simple current source. It will, it will just uh, put in some current into the circuit under DC operation. And under small signal operation, this current source is replaced by its resistance, the given resistance, the impedance, and that is large signal. Ideal open circuit, but practical current source, you cannot have infinity, but very large. So now in the next class onwards, we will now replace this RD by means of some current source, and we will see that there are different types of current source that we can make, either using NMOS or using PMOS, and what advantage we are getting out of it. Whether we can increase the gain, whether we can have higher uh, stable gain or not. More stable gain or not, you have to check. Okay, so with this, I think, uh, we have come to the end of uh, today's discussion. Let me conclude here.